Okay. Catherine, you had a question? Um, I, I had two questions because uh, I've had some long-held assumptions that were just um, contradictory, <laughs> <laughs> and I want to confirm what I'm hearing. One has to do with insurance, and I had always been told that, well, if you have the county plan or Medicaid or even Medicare if you're older, that you can't always get coverage. But if you have private insurance, the gold star being Blue Cross Blue Shield, that you can always get coverage. And I, I think what you were saying is that, that that's not true. They have limits on number of visits. And if you could expand on that a little bit. Oh, it's mind bend. Uh, it, you know, it's mind bendingly complex. Mm -hmm. uh, at Packard's 30th anniversary, Jerry stood up and said the billing part of medicine is harder than the medical care of medicine. Mm -hmm. And if you want to track what insurances are covering, boy, get ready because your head is going to be spinning. In general, you know, they cover less and less over time, but they all have limits on how many, you know, how many PT visits you can have in a year, how many therapy visits you can mm -hmm. have in a year. And then, you know, maybe there's like an appeals process you can go beyond that. Yeah, I, I mean, it's, it's really kind of baffling. I thought the harder part of me figuring out how to integrate with the care team at the clinic was going to be about names and faces and diagnoses and, and care plans. And it's really been a lot about billing and insurance and coverage. Um, you know, some people will have 10 visits. Some people will have 20 visits. Um, some people will have $700 deductibles. And they don't have to pay anything out of their deductible to see their primary care doc, but they would have to sit spend down that $700 to see me, which is mind-boggling to me. Mm -hmm. um, but even under parity, under, yes. under yes. the federal If you have a $700 deductible for specialty care, then it's $700 deductible for specialty care. And I'm specialty care. Well, why would mental health be specialty care if we have parity with physical exactly. health? Well, I mean, specialty care being like if you were going to go see a surgeon or that, you know, that psychiatry and mental health care is for some insurance policies, the, the same as going to see a surgeon for or going to see a higher level, what they call it, a higher level of care than primary care. Okay. So. They to have parity, but they can fit. Insurance company, I used to be my health director of MCARE. And so I know. I mean, people look, you know, how well, MCARE is really unique, but I could, I was familiar with some other places. Some of my co mother for director came from Aetna and Anthem, and they thought I'd win. The goal was to minimize the number of bigots and make, and make money. Yeah, parody is treating everybody poorly. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so even though you have parody, they figure out, you know. Because it's special. Okay, so yeah, then the special. other um, widely held assumption I've had um, forever and ever is that um, some generics you could substitute very well, but the common ones, now I'm, I don't know if it's antibiotics or whatever, but that some of the more esoteric medication, you couldn't really substitute generics that well, and mental health medications were one of the poorer ones to substitute. Now, maybe you could just maybe clarify what you were saying earlier. So I would think mainly Three or four things. One is antidepressant. There are probably 10, 15 generic antidepressants now. Maybe some people do need some better because that's the only one that works. And that is very expensive. But there are, rather than go to that first, have you tried any of the other seven or eight? Okay. And bipolar, lithium. If you talk to most of the psychiatrists, they'll tell you lithium works as well as some of the newer drugs. But people, for some reason, continue psychiatrists as well prescribe the newer ones, which are very expensive. Um, there are several examples like that um, that I was talking about. Having said that, very clearly, some people do need either there's nothing available for their condition or they need something that is only a brand name and that's not that appropriate, but it's also expensive. There were certainly concerns, I'm not up on this right now, but for a long time I, what I heard from, from consumers and from doctors is that formularies used by Medicaid um, essentially put a lot of the newer drugs, they didn't pay them, they were off of the list and people were using 
the less expensive but older kinds of, of, of antidepressants, um, psychotropic drugs. Is that still true? In other words, is, is Medicaid more restrictive either even than the, the, the private insurances might be around generics and around the use of drugs? I'm really probably with more than me, but I haven't had noticed that lately. Um, they seem to be reasonably... Okay. I have about 10 percent, only have about 10 percent Medicaid, so, yeah. Mm -hmm. So you know they all have formularies now. Right. I think Blue Care Network has five tiers or something. I mean, it's like, yeah. remember when it was like tier one and two? I'm like, oh, okay. Seriously, I think they've got five now. I'm not, I'm not making this up. And each one is more expensive. And having said that, you know, none of the insurers like to pay for uh, expensive drugs. Mm -hmm. So they'll all make it difficult to access. And those. so you wouldn't see Medicaid as being any worse than, than many other programs? They're certainly not better. There's, well, yeah. yeah, yeah, they're certainly not better. I, I would, you know, again, they, they just have fewer resources, so they're going to have a tighter formulary than, mm -hmm. than a lot of the standard private insurances. 